Welcome. In this short video, we're going to pick up with the concept of risk aversion and then look at an application. So we're going to talk about what it is to be risk averse and we're going to look at an application that guides us into what a risk averse investor would do. What kind of choices would a risk averse investor make? So recall with risk aversion, we assume that people are risk averse. This is a basic assumption you see in economics and finance um, that's used to guide and predict human behavior. What this means is that people do not like risk all else equal. So if you hold every other factor equal in investment, people would always choose the one with lower risk. Of course, not everything else is equal, which can make things more complicated. But this all else equal is important because if the reward is there, people will take a risk. So risk averse investors will take risk for a higher expected return if they think the higher expected return is sufficient to compensate them for what they don't like, which is risk. So risk aversion is also alternatively described as risk requires compensation. Investors take on additional risk, in other words, additional uncertainty over their actual returns if they're compensated by a higher expected return. If they expect in the long run they might be better off by taking the risk, then they'll take the risk. Again, I want to emphasize that risk aversion doesn't mean people do not take risk. People take risks all the time. People don't just use safe investments, they, they use risky investments. That doesn't mean they're not risk averse. Risk aversion means that people don't take uncompensated risks. Right? Risk aversion means that there's a risk return trade-off that riskier assets have to carry a higher expected return. If they don't, people won't take on that risk. So it means there's a trade-off between risk and return. It does not mean that people avoid risk. Alternatively, risk aversion is also going to mean that people pay to avoid risk. That's the whole idea of insurance. So for example, property or renter's insurance means that people pay a premium to avoid the financial risk of losing their possessions suddenly in a fire or a theft or some other type of incident like that. People pay to avoid certain risks because we're risk averse and so we're better off if we can get someone else to bear that risk depending on the price. So recall the risk of premium is a higher expected return that compensates the buyer for taking the risk. Risk requires compensation we call that compensation a risk premium. So for example, if a risk premium is the yield on US Treasury bonds, they tend to be lower than the yield on corporate bonds. Why? Because the corporate bonds have a higher risk of default and they compensate investors for that higher risk by offering a higher yield so they can be attractive. Related to the concept of risk aversion is risk neutrality. A risk neutral investor would only care about expected return and not the risk that surrounds the return. So the uh, fundamental uncertainty of the return doesn't bother a risk neutral investor. They're just concerned about the expected return. Um, risk neutrality is a concept. Uh, investors just aren't risk neutral. We see nothing in investor behavior that would suggest that investors are risk neutral. So here's a simple example and then we'll do one that's a bit more complicated. So consider the coin flip game. And so consider we play a coin flip game where heads you get zero dollars, tails you get fifty. I'm sorry, tails you get a hundred dollars. So the expected value of this coin flip game, fifty percent on zero dollars, fifty percent probability of a hundred dollars. The expected value of this coin flip game is fifty dollars. So suppose I give you the choice of playing this game, or I say forget the game, and I'll just give you fifty dollars. Well, you're not indifferent between that. A risk-averse investor would always take the $50. $50 certain is better than a risk of not getting anything. A risk-neutral investor really wouldn't care between the coin flip game and the $50 up front. So that's kind of a difference between risk-averse and risk-neutral. So now let's take a look at a more complicated example. So here I'm going to have three investments and each investment I'm giving the return structure, the possible returns, and the probability of each of these returns. I also have gone ahead and calculated the standard deviation of each of these investments below. So notice investment three is actually certain. It's a risk-free investment, 2% return, 
absolutely certain, which means it has a standard deviation of zero. There's no variability in return. Investment two, two possible returns, each with equal probability, which implies a certain standard deviation. Investment three, there's th investment one, there are three possible returns, probability structure, standard deviation. So I have three questions here, and we'll take each one in turn. We'll try and answer each one in turn here. So we want to look at this investment structure and say, which investment would be preferred by a risk-averse investor? Or can we even say which one they would choose? Can we eliminate any of these three investments that would be chosen by a risk-averse investor? In other words, given this choice, do we know what they will not choose? And then finally, let's think about what a risk-neutral investor might prefer. So the first step to answer any of those three questions is to calculate the expected return on each of the three investments. So let's do that now. So investment one had three possible returns, minus 2%, 6%, and 10%. And there's the associated probability with each of those returns. We get an expected return of 4%. Investment two has two possible returns, minus 5%, 12%, equal probability. That gives us an expected return of 3.5%. And then finally, investment three is certain. There was a certain return of 2%. So the expected return is 2%. So we have the expected returns, and now I'm going to go back to that table, and so we'll compare the expected return and the standard deviation for each of the three investments. So here's my revised table. I have three investments with this expected returns and the associated standard deviation. So let's go back to the first of the three questions I asked. Can we say for certain which investment would be preferred by a risk-inverse investor? Yes or no, and why? Well, this is the highest expected return, but it also has a higher standard deviation than investment three. So if we just look at investment one and three for a moment, while investment one promises a higher expected return, that return is uncertain. Investment three has a lower return, but it's giving you no risk. So the answer here is really no. We can't actually look at these three investments and pick out the one that all risk-averse investors would definitely want. While investment one has um, the highest expected return, it has more risk than investment three. Is this enough compensation for the risk? If we don't know. For some risk-averse investors, they'll take investment one. They'll say the risk is compensated, and I'll go this way. Other cautious investors might say, you know what, that extra expected return isn't worth it to take that kind of risk, I don't want to, and they'll stick with investment three. Well, what about investment two? Well, that brings us to the second bulleted question we talked about. Can we say for certain which investment would not be chosen by a risk-averse investor? The answer here is yes, and it's going to be investment two. And let's think about why. Well, investment two here has a lower expected return than investment one. Three and a half percent lower than four percent. But at the same time here, in this example I've set up, investment two has a significantly higher standard deviation. So less reward, more risk. Well, who would want that? Well, no one. So investment two with a lower expected return and higher risk is clearly inferior to investment one. A risk-averse investor would never choose investment two over investment one. Right. Given the choice between these two, a risk-averse risk investor will never choose investment two. Finally, the last question is, can we say for certain what a risk-neutral investor would do? Well, recall a risk-neutral investor isn't really concerned about the risk of the return. They're just concerned about the overall return. So here, a risk-neutral investor would actually choose investment one because it has the highest expected return. In reality, investors are risk-averse, and they would be looking more carefully at the risk-return trade-off.